We rode for some time within hearing of the Kinugawa, catching magnificent glimpses of it frequently, turbulent and locked in by walls of porphyry, or widening and calming and spreading its aquamarine waters over great slabs of pink and green rock, lighted fitfully by the sun, or spanned by rainbows, or pausing to rest in deep shady pools, but always beautiful. That was a description of how the Kinagawa River looked 140 years ago, and it's still beautiful today. The person who wrote those words was Isabella Bird, an English explorer who departed from Yokohama and moved up to Nikko. This time, we're going to be following her footsteps, using her book as a guide as we travel to Tsugawa. Let's see what's waiting for us. Tracing the Japan that Isabella Bird glimpsed 140 years ago. On this edition of Journeys in Japan, writer Benjamin Boas follows in the footsteps of Isabella Bird looking for vestiges of those early days soon after Japan opened up to the world. The starting point for today's journey is Kinugawa Onsen in Tochigi Prefecture, around 120 kilometers north of Tokyo. This hot spring resort in the city of Nikko was first discovered more than 300 years ago. For a long time, only feudal lords and priests were allowed to bathe here. The hot spring was only open to the public after the Meiji era began. Although there were few buildings when Bird visited, before long, large inns sprang up and it grew into a popular tourist spot. But due to the effects of the bursting of Japan's economic bubble, tourism started to decline. It's on the rise again, though, thanks to the boom in inbound international tourism. This is Isabella Bird's book, which Benjamin is using as a guide for his trip. Called Unbeaten Tracks in Japan, she wrote it in the form of letters home to her sister. Bird was born in the county of Yorkshire in Northern England. She was 47 when she arrived in Japan. She also went on to visit other parts of Asia and the Middle East. Setting out from Yokohama, she spent three months traveling, first to Nikko, then to Niigata, Akita, and eventually Hokkaido. Later, she visited Western Japan, in all staying in the country over half a year. From Nikko, Bird's route took her across to Niigata via the Aizu region. Benjamin's plan is to follow her route as far as the town of Tsugawa. There's one place I'd like to see before we head out. Here it is. This roadside inn, built in 1868, stood in the post town of Fujiwara Shuku on the old highway. Now it's preserved in a nearby park. The main part of the house and the stables share the same roof. This lodging was often used by itinerant traders.
In her book, Isabella wrote about staying in a yadoya. It must have looked just like this. And that must be the stable in there. I wonder how many horses fit in. あ、こんにちは。この建物についてお教えてくださる方ですか。はい、この地域の歴史の研究をしています大塚と申します。これが馬小屋ですかね。はい、今はちょっと資料館ということでいろんなものが昔のものが置いてありますけれども、当時として
from Nico, Bird made her way along steep mountain roads, finally arriving in Minamiaizu. She writes that the map is blank in this region. She was heading for Tajima based on the scanty details available to her. After passing through the area, Isabella recorded her experiences. She wrote, the country was really very beautiful. The views were wider and finer. And she mentioned the clustered peaks. This post town, Ochijuku, lies about 25 kilometers from Tajima. Bird only mentions the name briefly, but today, around 150 years later, it's become quite well known in Japan. The Edo period townscape has been left virtually intact, preserved almost like a time capsule. With the opening of railroads, foot traffic along this road ceased. And for years, there were few interactions with the outside world. The Minoya Inn is the place where Isabella Bird stayed. It's still the residence of the Abe family, but they do allow visitors to view some of the rooms. この部屋で泊まったんですね。そうなんですよ。はい。そうですか。え、じゃあバードさんが国に泊まってどんな感じだったでしょうね。あの、当時の話の言い伝えなんですけれど、やっぱり外国人の女の方って誰も見たことなか
、まあ、あの大地塾屋根拭きが始まると「ゆい」っていう,こうい、はい、昔からの仕組みがありまして。ああ Most Japanese villages had a system of cooperation known as Yui, whereby the local people come together to help when many hands are needed for major tasks. はい。観光の仕事をしながら、はい、まあこういう技術を覚えているというような形ですね。いいですね。こうして目の前に優位の次の世代が、はい、まあ教育されているということが、まあ今日見えて嬉しいです The Aizu Basin lies about 20 kilometers north of Ochijuku. Avoiding the castle town of Aizu Wakamatsu, Isabella Bird made her way to the west side of the basin. She is thought to have taken this route because the damage from the Boshin War was still very fresh in the town. The fighting was so intense, in this area, the conflict came to be known as the Aizu War. Aizu Wakamatsu's iconic castle was severely damaged by cannon fire, and several thousand people lost their lives. Isn't this tree beautiful? It's been around for 300 years. Isabella came near this very tree as she continued her way up north. At this point, crowds were forming to come and see the famous explorer, and Isabella was getting a little bit tired. But she did write that she was able to observe some washi paper making at a nearby farmhouse, and she enjoyed the experience. This area is known for a paper mache folk craft called Aizu Hariko, especially this toy cow known as Akabeko. Today, the tradition of producing washi has almost disappeared in Aizu, but the paper mache folk craft remains alive. This workshop is located in the Nozawa district of Nishi Aizu town. A place that bird passed through. とてもかわいいですけれども、どうやって作るんですか？えっ、ー、とですね、昔はあの木の型に和紙を貼って作ってたんですけど、今は私たちは水に再生紙を溶いて、でそこに形ができている箱を沈めて、えー、あの形を作っています。なるほど、じゃ再生紙と水だけですね。そうですね。あ、そうですか。うんとてもエコでいいですね、はいはい。昔からのデザインは変わってないんですか？あのフォルムとかは変わってないです、ね。変わってないんですか、はいはい？じゃあ新しいデザインも作らないということですか？いや新しいデザインのものも作りながら古いものを守っていこうっていうことをやっています。いいですね。なんか古いものを守りながら新しいものを作るっていうことですね。<笑>そうですね。うん。As it is no longer covered with washi paper, the process is a bit shorter now. Even so, 
because everything is done by hand, it takes about four days to complete. Aizu Hariko was introduced here 350 years ago. The local lord at that time brought a doll maker from Kyoto, and he instructed the lower-ranking samurai to learn the craft as a way to make a living. The traditional red akabeko cow is a good luck charm and has long been given to babies when they are born. Recently, a new design in blue has also become popular. どうしてあったらしいから作るんですか。東北は東日本大震災っていうのがあったので、それをきっかけに新しいものっていうのがたくさん生まれています。やっぱりみんなに元気を与えるようなデザインだったりするものを作ってるんですけど。はい、そうです
Beginning in the Meiji era, mines were developed in this region, and roads and railroads were built alongside the Agano River. A dam was also constructed, so the swift current that Bird would have seen has now disappeared. Even so, there is beautiful scenery to be enjoyed along the river. When boats for tourism go down the river in Japan, they call it line kudari, where kudari means going down. And the origin of the line term might have actually been the Rhine River in Germany, which Isabella writes about. Pinnacles and needles of bare flushed rock rose out of luxuriant vegetation. Queering without its bareness, the Rhine without its ruins, and more beautiful than both. This leg of the journey began with a river, and it ends with a river. Isabella wrote about the beautiful scenery that she saw, but as she put it, Japan is not fairyland, and that even though some readers might not like the descriptions that she was saying, she wrote it to contribute to the general knowledge of the world. Just like her, I saw beautiful scenery, wonderful people, amazing culture, but I also noticed that some of these regions are encountering difficulties as Japan continues to move into the 21st century. If you'd like to help out, I encourage you to come. Tourism is one great way to revitalize these localities. Maybe it's time for you to make Isabella's journey your own. From Tokyo, trains to Kinagawa Onsen take about three hours. To reach the Aizu area and Sugawa, you can use the local train or bus services.